Good morning. It's Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Truth Waiting for the Hangman, and our scripture is Lamentations, chapter 2, where Jeremiah writes, What can I say about you? Who has ever seen such sorrow? O daughter of Jerusalem, to what can I compare your anguish? O virgin daughter of Zion, how can I comfort you? For your wound is as deep as the sea. Who can heal you? Your prophets have said so many foolish things, false to the core. They did not save you from exile by pointing out your sins. Instead, they painted false pictures, filling you with false hope. All who pass by jeer at you. They scoff and insult beautiful Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city called most beautiful in all the world, and joy of all the earth? All your enemies mock you. They scoff and snarl and say, We have destroyed her at last. We've long waited for this day, and it's finally here. But it is the Lord who did just as he planned. He has fulfilled the promises of disaster he made long ago. He has destroyed Jerusalem without mercy. He has caused her enemies to gloat over her and has given them power over her. The prophet Jeremiah is generally accepted to be the author of Lamentations. His is not a message positivity thinkers would appreciate. Truth be told, Jeremiah had little positive affirmation in his life. Every time he opened his mouth to speak the word of God to God's people, he either developed a new enemy, or a few thousand of them, or got thrown in prison. Church tradition suggests he was stoned to death for heresy by Jewish leaders in Egypt. He spent a lot of time waiting for the hangman. In that waiting, Jeremiah saw clearly what national catastrophe looks like. In the case of Jerusalem, the prophet predicted and lived to see the day when that beautiful city of God set on a hill was defeated and destroyed, its citizens reduced to either slavery or starvation or both. And what the prophet said about it all must have been like salt rubbed in the wounds. It wasn't unfair. It wasn't God abandoning his covenant or somehow falling down on the job. It was God fulfilling his covenantal promises that if Israel served God faithfully, his promises were of life and strength and a never-ending sense of peace and joy. On the other side of that coin of promise was a warning that if they served other gods, they would experience the wrath of judgment. It wasn't hard for Jeremiah to connect the dots. Israel had wandered into the far country of idolatry and sin. James Russell Lowell penned the famous words concerning truth and wrong, particularly in public life and poignant for any nation. Truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yet that scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. Perhaps Lowell had Jeremiah's day in mind when he wrote this, But it certainly looms larger over the next four years, or any moment in time, than any appraisal of the economy or international relations, poverty or justice, compared to what God is doing in plain sight to a nation so divided and angry. In America, we're busy electing our governmental leaders for the next cycle. As of this writing, it's unclear who will be president or control the Congress. But one thing is clear. Whoever sits in a senator's chair or at the resolute desk in the Oval Office, that person will not be without sin. The real question is whether the people who are ruled by the elected leaders will take truth off the scaffold and send the hangman to remove wrong from the throne. Now, let me be very clear, I'm not suggesting a bloody revolution. Indeed, just the opposite. I'm suggesting what another prophet, probably Ezra, wrote about the government of Israel and how they were falling into worshiping other gods and the only true path the people can take to extricate themselves from impending judgment. Second Chronicles 7.14 
Then if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn away from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and restore their land. For you today, may I suggest that we spend a lot less time talking about how right or wrong the election's outcome may be. May we begin the process of placing truth back on the throne by humbling ourselves, praying, seeking God, and weeding out the sins in our own lives. God responds to what his people do, whether evil or good. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.